Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. We can hear. All right, you can hear me. All right. So um, we'll we'll give it another two minutes and start sharply at seven thirty-five. So um, just two more minutes and then we'll start. So just just bear with us for another two minutes and then we'll start. We have a very interesting session uh, ahead of us. So just give us two minutes and uh, we will we'll, we'll connect and we'll we'll start. government in canada as as an auditor so canada was the country where i did my cpa so i moved to canada in 1979 and till 80 uh, till 97 i was working in canada i was a senior auditor with with the government but i got my ca qualification in canada in 83 then i started working as an auditor with the government of canada and then with the provincial governments like the state governments of india uh, i worked in the province of ontario as an auditor so i i left them in about 88 and started my own tax consulting practice and in 97 i joined the becker cpa so i had my own practice as a tax consultant so i was consulting both in direct taxation and indirect taxation like you know income tax by commodity taxes sales tax and i was working for all the big companies uh, as a consultant you know trying to maximize their you know effectiveness in um, taxation and then uh, in 97 i i went to a becker class in toronto in toronto i went to a becker class and i went the reason i thought of doing cpa at that time was was strictly by default i was already a qualified ca i was very well employed i had my own practice but then at the back of my mind i was thinking that if tomorrow my kids move to us so uh, without any motive of enhancing my career i was already very well established you know and working very well so i i still thought that you know if tomorrow my kids move to us maybe i should add a us qualification and so cpa and becker cpa review are unanimous terms like you know basically it's very synonymous they anybody who wants to do cpa automatically thinks of becker and uh, he automatically thinks of becker and then i joined uh, i joined the becker cpa review classes in toronto back in 97 and passed in the first attempt at that time you know we didn't have a uh, like you know online exam uh, you know on demand so it was a paper pencil exam to be held in may and november so i wrote i started studying in april i wrote my exam in may and i cleared all the four papers in the first attempt now the becker methodology you know uh, aziz uh, the international director is going to talk about the becker uh, in more detail So the minute I cleared my Becker CPA review examination, I went back to my normal practice as a consultant in Canada. But then, you know, the opportunities that opened after that CPA qualification, I was already very well employed, and then this is sitting in Canada, having done the US CPA examination. So uh, I I got uh, approached by Becker. to see if they if i was interested if, even i applied i applied to get a franchise center from from uh, becker to open the becker cpa review centers in other parts of canada or in the us 
and I was selected, uh, you know, I was given the rights to open up franchise centers, but they said that they were not offering centers in, in uh, Canada or in the US. And they gave me the opportunity. They said, would you like to try to open centers in India? And that is how Becker CP Review came to India. You know, Orbit Institutes and uh, Orbit Institutes brought Becker CPA Review to India. In fact, brought, it brought CPA education to India. So we are the pioneers of the CPA Review course in India. So our CPA journey in India started from Delhi. It started, it started in 1997. It, it started from Delhi. And we had uh, right in the first batch, and this is going back to 97, uh, when we had the first batch, right in 97, we started the first batch, we had 46 students. There was no CPA, very, very few CPA. There was only one CPA uh, who, who was an instructor with, the, with us. And both of us were teaching, administering and running the whole course. So we, re we ran that course for 46 students. And after the course started in Delhi, and uh, we went to Mumbai to uh, open up a second center. So in, uh, we set up a second center in Mumbai in um, 98, 98 April. And there was no CPA. Uh, it, it's a very short, uh, where, you know, I started my CPA operations in Mumbai from a, from a telephone, um, you know, a STD shop. I told that guy that, you know, I'd like to conduct a seminar in uh, Mumbai, you know, offering CPA to the students uh, in India. And, uh, you know, you just take all the calls, record all the numbers. And that's how I started my CPA operations in Mumbai from an STD shop. And in the seminar, we had about 500 people in Mumbai going back to 99, 99, 98, sorry. And uh, we started a center in Mumbai with 48 students again. And gradually, right from 97, we started up opening centers and Orbit had centers in 12 cities in India. We had pan-India presence. We had presence in Delhi. Delhi was the first center, then Mumbai. From Mumbai, we moved to Bangalore, we moved to Hyderabad, we moved to Chennai, we moved to Cochin. And uh, we opened a center in Calcutta, in uh, Chandigarh, and in Pune. So in 99 also, we, we moved from Delhi, which was the uh, original head office. And we set up the Orbit head office in, um, in Pune. So Pune became the uh, head office of Orbit Institutes. And Orbit had retail centers in 12 cities in India. And in addition to the retail centers, right from 1997, right up to 2014 or 15, we had 70 or 80 corporate clients. Clients who would, uh, you know, companies who would send their employees to do the CPA operations with us. And I'll mention a lot of them today. Uh, we, we did training for Genpact. We did, we still do training for Deloitte, for ENY, for KPMG, for Bank of America, American Express, Agilent Technologies, Citibank. I mean, name them. There were so many, uh, you know, Grand Thought and so many companies that we did training on. So while this whole journey was going on, we were training for students uh, with, the, with the corporates and at retail level. Uh, and, you know, at that time, I would say that, you know, we had over 2000 students every year. So today, as we speak today, we still have centers in a lot of places. Uh, we Orbit still has centers in Pune, Hyderabad, uh, Chennai, Bangalore, uh, Delhi, and uh, we 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 do training. Any any competition that we have today, I'm going to talk. Uh, any competition that we have today in India is Hello. started by a student of mine, Varun Jain. Uh, who runs the Mild CPA Review is an ex-student of Becker. He was also an instructor with us in Hyderabad. Uh, you know, other courses also, they're all ex-students. Shiripal Jain from, uh, from Hyderabad, who's also a Becker partner now, was an ex-student with us. 
And so we, uh, Orbit is the pioneer of the CPU operations in India, having started in 12 cities, having association with a lot of companies. We had, during those years, we had 120 qualified CPAs on faculty with us. People who were teaching in all these various cities, who would teach different subjects and all. So that is that is the orbit uh, background that we have. And uh, Mr. Aziz uh, will talk about the Becker CP review course uh, and you know what what the thing is. Now I'm going to before uh, before he takes over and uh, I'm going to tell you about the CPA qualification. What is involved? What how do you actually sitting in India? How do you become a CPA? <clears throat> The certified, and I'm going to tell you the differences between the CP examination and the Indian CA examination. What are the similarities? What are the differences? How do you go about completing your uh, uh, CP examination? Now, for anybody, anybody to write the CP examination, you need to be a graduate with an accounting background. Your ability to write the CP examination requires you to have 120 semester hours, you know, with various backgrounds, you know, you, you should have so many credit hours in accounting, so much in auditing, so much in taxation, so much in business courses, and that will qualify you to write the CP examination. So, so the first difference between the Indian CA examination and the US CP examination is that you need to be a graduate and having at least 120 semester hours to qualify to write the examination. Right now, a lot of states are inching towards, you know, making the eligibility to write the examination and getting a license from that, ex that state to be equivalent to 150 semester hours. But you can still write your CP examination from quite a lot of places with 120 semester hours. Now, what does is, what is 120 semester hours translate to as far as the uh, Indian educational system is concerned? So if you're a graduate with an accounting background, you're a BCom. Uh, and you know, in India, we have a university ranking system, like, you know, based on the ranking of the university, um, your uh, BCom will get you so many credit hours. So if you're a BCom, you would qualify to write the CP examination. Uh, an MCom is eligible, an MBA with a finance background is eligible, a chartered accountant is eligible. So 120 semester hours will give you the opportunity to write the CP examination, but that's inching towards 150 semester hours, which basically in, in very simple Indian education system amounts to 16 hours of education, 16 years of education. So a BCom will qualify 16 years of education. So the first requirement is that for you to qualify to write the CP examination, you should meet the educational requirements. Now that educational requirements uh, are not determined by us. You know, when we, we have so much experience that right by looking at your educational certificates, we can tell you that yes, you qualify for the CP examination, but it involves an eligibility process. So all of you will be required to, you know, get your educational certificates starting from grade, uh, grade 12 onwards. Uh, grade 12, your graduation, and if you're an MCOM part one, you make certificates, so get them notarized and send it to an evaluating agency in the US. And they will send you, uh, you know, a report back saying that you meet, you have so many credit hours and you do qualify to write the CP examination. So that is, that is a process that needs to, that needs to be done. We can tell you and invariably, whatever we tell you, that you qualify, it means you qualify. There might be some shortages, but we'll tell you that, okay, you're short of three credit hours, you need to do another accounting course and this and that. So that is that is the first process. Now, then after you're after you're eligible for the examination, you enroll for the examination. No, you don't enroll for the examination, you start studying for the examination. And that is where Becker CPA review comes into play. Now, previously, when we wrote the examination, it was a paper pencil exam held in May and November over two days. Right now, the CP examination is a computer based exam available upon demand. It can be written anytime that you like, and it can be written from India also. It can be written from India, US, uh, you know, United States, and uh, 
Dubai, Middle East, China, Hong Kong, quite a lot of places, but the examination is offered in India. And you can plan and write the examination. You know, you can write, I mean, uh, one today and wait for a week and write, write the other examination. Now, to pass the examination, you need 75% marks. There are only four papers in which you are tested in the CP examination. The first paper is the financial accounting and reporting. Now, when we compare the uh, financial accounting and reporting uh, Uh, when you, when you, uh, Shamili, are you there? One second, please. Shamili, you're there? Okay, just, just give me one second. Mr. Aziz is trying to join. I'm just going to tell him one second. I'm there, I'm there. What, yeah. what happened? Can you, can you send an, uh, an invite to Aziz? He's trying to join. Okay. Um, okay. All right, just, just send him a mail. Uh, all right, so, uh, as I mentioned, the, C, the financial accounting and reporting paper, all the examination, there are only four papers that you have to write and they're all four hour examinations. And the paper is composed of, you know, almost 50% uh, multiple choice and 50% simulations, which are like essay type questions. Now, so financial accounting and reporting, when you compare the course content of the financial accounting and reporting paper to what you have done, uh, in BCom, MCom, in your CA examination is very, very similar. Of course, the accounting principles of different countries are different. You know, we have IFRS applications in India, but in, in the US, we have generally accepted accounting principles. But most of these principles are, are based on the same platform. Like, you know, you have revenue recognition. When do you recognize revenue? The principles are almost the same, uh, but these are generally accepted accounting principles of the US. Now, so when you approach this financial accounting paper, your coverage and your background of this paper is very, very uh, similar to what is done. There are a few areas which are like governmental accounting, which, uh, which are slightly different. So I would say that you, you're already accustomed to about 90% of that paper. The next paper is auditing. Auditing is of course, internal control, audit reports, attestation reports. And this is also the principles are very, very similar. How do you check a company's internal controls? How do you issue reports? What are the procedures? What are the steps that you do? And what, how do you communicate with the directors or the board of directors with the shareholders? So that is a paper you're very, very familiar with. And the, uh, the paper that is totally new is of course the regulation paper. Regulation is all about statues. Uh, statues of uh, you know taxation and when we talk of taxation we're talking of individual taxation entity taxation like partnerships as corporations c corporations non-profit organizations and all and the last paper uh, that's a new paper and the last paper is business environment also a very familiar paper uh, to you so the familiar paper on business environment covers economics uh, statistics and uh, a bit of costing budgeting, uh, management, decision-making uh, abilities and all the stuff. So for a, for a student who's done his BCom or MCom uh, part one and MBA finance, you know, when you approach the CP examination, you, uh, you've already covered, I would say you already used to about 65 to 70% of the course content. Now, as I mentioned, you know, we've been, uh, we've been coaching for the CP examination for the last 23 years now. We started in 97. We are the pioneers of the CPA operations in India. Everybody who's running a CPA operation as a competition is a student of ours. And uh, we, we've been using the Becker material. Uh, we're going to, uh, so that is, that is the background of that. Now, what happens after you, after you write your CPA examination? Now, and number one, why should anybody in India write the CP examination. You know, uh, previously, remember, with times, you know, there's been a lot of evolution in, uh, in education. Uh, 50 years ago, a graduate was considered to be a very high qualification. And now even a postgraduate is not is, is very competitive. And today, education is not confined within any borders. It is not confined to India, everything is becoming global. There is a lot of exchanges of, uh, you know, trying an attempt to amalgamate uh, 
accounting principles and accounting standards. That is why, you know, we always hear of IFRS trying to amalgamate with US CAP so that wherever anybody, any chartered accountant or any CPA, uh, whether you are in India or in UK or in USA, whenever you prepare your financial statements, the accounting principles uh, followed should really be very, very similar so that, you know, when you look, when you review or uh, critically review a balance sheet, you can make, you know, judgments that yes, you can compare a company in India to a company in the US or to a company in India. So there's going to be a lot of standardization of, of uh, education. And that is why education has become global. So one reason, if you want to excel and stand out in India as being somebody who's very unique, very qualified, it is always advisable to add to your qualification, a qualification that is recognized worldwide. And US CPA qualification is recognized all over the world. So that is the first reason. The second reason is mobility, you know, international mobility uh, throughout the world, this, this qualification will take you to any part of the world. You know, we, as I mentioned, we have so many students who are today working in Singapore, uh, working in Canada, working in Dubai, work, a lot of them are working in the US. Now, out of, you know, uh, we've tried to analyze as much as we could. When we try to analyze, you know, what is, where have our students gone after passing the examination? 70% of our students who've studied with us and qualified for the CP examination have gone abroad. 30% of the students have stayed back and that's quite a huge number also. The 30% of the students have stayed back and I can tell you a lot of cases of students in India who have not been unemployed even for a day after becoming a CPA. The CPA qualification has a very, very huge demand in, the United, uh, in India and all over the world. Now, why is there a huge demand for the CPA qualification in India? Because number one, India is the back, back office of a lot of multinational companies. We have so many companies that have back processes being conducted in India. Uh, I won't mention a company, but it's one of the top accounting firms. Uh, just, uh, some uh, just to share a statistics with you, 40% of that, of the tax returns of that top accounting firm are done in India, are done in Hyderabad, Bangalore, uh, and Delhi. Similarly, we have offices like American Express, you know, Genpact. They have so many business processes uh, of American companies or worldwide companies that are being done in India. So that is, that is one reason that the Indian, uh, the CPA qualification is highly endorsed and highly accepted in India. And uh, people have great opportunities. You know, I'm reminded of one, one guy I was, in fact, I was trying to contact him to uh, come, um, come on board and, you know, talk to you, talk to you today. Uh, this person is, uh, his name is uh, Kazad Kotwal. And I remember he was my first student, you know, when, when I started my batch in Bombay. Uh, I'm going to mention you a lot of examples. Uh, uh, when I started my batch in Bombay, so he joined my class. Uh, he joined the class. He was a fresh CA. And uh, he just found a job. He just qualified as a chartered accountant. He joined the uh, CPA review course in Mumbai. And of course, that time it was a paper pencil exam. They all wrote. They, they had to come to the US at that time. So they all wrote and he cleared the examination in, uh, in the first attempt. Uh, it, he was earning, I mean, I remember very, very precisely that at that time when he joined, he was earning 40,000 rupees. And this is going back about 20 years. Today, he's one of the partners with one of the big accounting firms, international accounting firms based out of Delhi, having a package of over one CR. This is just one example. And there are so many people, uh, students who have joined jobs with Genpack, with Deloitte, with Bank of America, American Express. Now, why do, why do these companies need uh, US qualified uh, you know, employees? 
number one you know whenever uh, it's global they're doing that it is they have the back office of a lot of operations and processes that are us related have to comply with reporting requirements as per us generally accepted accounting principles so and because the processes are being handled and done in india like you know preparing a tax return in india so these people need to be uh, trained in us accounting us taxation so that is why there there are tremendous job opportunities opportunities in india so international mobility uh, back office in india and thirdly you are partnering uh, then so these are the reasons uh, why one should do it to stand out in your country uh, and to excel and be you know one of one in the crowd uh, if you add the cp qualification to to your existing qualifications uh, you know you can do well how difficult okay so how difficult it is what happens after the qualification you've passed you've got a job now 70% of the people who get their cp qualification do not practice okay they don't need article ship like you know when you when you're a chartered accountant you don't get your ca qualification until you do your article ship this is not the case with cpa once i clear my cp examination i've met all the eligibility requirements of a state i can work i do not need to get licensed why is a license required a license is only required if you are engaged in doing audits or attestation services not all kinds of attestation services there are a lot of attestation services like a compilation engagement or a review engagement which doesn't require a license you can be a cpa so you need a license if you are uh, if you want to do an audit now the cp qualification is uh, given by american institute of certified public accountants and the license is given by the state so 70% of the people do not have a license because they do not do audit mm -hmm. you can work in the private sector sector you can work in the government sector you can be uh you can have your own practice and even you know when you when you do a cross section of the profile of a lot of practicing uh, cpas mm -hmm. a practice of a cpa involves you know doing accounting doing <laughs> bookkeeping doing payroll doing sales tax and uh, and maybe doing audits now if you want to do an audit you need to have a license and licenses are granted by the state so you have to you have to apply to a particular state and get your license now most of the uh, you know leaving the big four out most of these small to medium sized firms only do a few audits the audit uh, section of their whole uh, business only consists of about 5 to 10% of their whole thing so as a cpa alone without getting a license you can do most of the things that everybody can do except uh, except you know having uh, except you you can't do an audit okay so that is uh, how how uh, it you know how the licensing process works so the licensing if you want to get an audit then we as cpas you know you have to get a certificate you have to apply for a license to a particular state and your employer will certify your experience we also provide certification services to verify your license experience we we do a due diligence and we tell the state board that you know we are uh, we as uh, i'm a cpa and uh, i'm certifying this person's experience i've not that he's not directly worked under with, uh, with me but we have contacted their employers and we have verified that he's got so much uh, so much background i'm a licensed cpa in three states i got my license in ohio uh, in florida and in new jersey so which basically means if i have got audit assignments uh, i can do any audit assignments here so that is uh, that is what a licensing procedure works and we'll help you now what i why what i always tell the students is that you know uh, the cp examination when you compare it to the ca examination is relatively easy it's not as difficult as the ca examination the pass rates of the ca examination are very very low and uh, you know it it sometimes takes a long time some people even keep on struggling for 10 years and they don't accomplish it so the cp examination is relatively easy it is very very doable 
you know, we have a very, very high pass rate. I mean, you know, the orbit uh, students, uh, we have 120 teachers all scattered all over India. Our success rates are very, very high. So even in the CP examination, the pass rate, the average pass rate globally is about 45%. 45% of the people who write the examination clear the CP examination in the first attempt. The pass rate in India is much, much higher. And opportunities are within India and outside India also. So this is one, one qualification, you know, which you can always add and, you know, stand out among the crowds, open doors for yourself. And you don't have to necessarily move out of India, but it, it at least have that opportunity to move out. And as I mentioned, 70% of all my students have moved, moved out. So, uh, so that was about, you know, about the value of this qualification and all. Now, what is, how do you approach this examination? I always tell my students that, you know, the foremost in your mind is because it's, it's a relatively easy exam. It is very doable. You can, there have been cases when students have finished the exam within five months. So anywhere from five months to about maybe 14 months within. So just by studying for that period, between five to 14 months from India, from India, you can easily do this examination. And it is relatively easy. Like anything else in life, even for studies, you need to be very disciplined. We need to be very motivated and you need to make sure that you're studying with the right material. And that is where Becker CPA review comes into, uh, comes into play. Uh, Becker, I'm gonna, uh, Mr. Aziz will just join us and he will, he will speak more about Becker. But in very simple, Becker is the- uh, He's already joined. He's joined. Okay, so he's going to take over. So Becker is the oldest CPA review course, and I'm going to introduce to you, it's my uh, great pleasure to welcome and to introduce to you, Mr. Aziz, who is the Director of International Operations for Becker. So he's going to explain everything about Becker, how partnering with Becker is a sure success step towards your CPA examination. So Mr. Aziz, could you please uh, take over? Sure. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, sir. Good. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Sharma, sir. G. Um, thanks so much for being here. I'm so delighted. And of course, I'm particularly delighted because of the fact that Orbit have been such a valuable partner, such a successful partner for Becker over the decades, I should say. Um, and just to hear you know, just to rehear some of those stories in terms of the success and the guidance that um, has been so valuable to so many thousands of students, I guess, in India over the last um, 10 years or so. So uh, a little bit about Becker. Uh, so let me introduce myself very quickly. I won't take long on that. Um, so I'm uh, a director for international business for Becker. I'm based in London, as you can probably tell from my accent. Um, and I look after, you know, Becker's support, Becker's partners around the world, of which obviously Orbit is one of the, the, the most well-established and uh, based in India. And in terms of Becker itself, Becker Professional Education is part of a large conglomerate focused on the education uh, sphere based in the US called Ad Telem, listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Becker itself has I guess been at pioneers of uh, training for the CPA exam, professional exams in the US for over 60 years. And I guess we're very lucky that, very fortunate I think that to have, you know, a lot of the top firms, basically almost all of the top firms in the US um, and globally choose Becker to support their training of their employees for the CPA exam. And, I, and I, I say choose, I think the other word, more important word is trust. Um, because, you know, there's a lot of investment that goes into that. And the fact that they're willing to do that for Becker, with Becker, I think is probably the confidence they have. And that confidence comes from one, you know, the legacy in terms of how well established Becker is. The confidence also comes from um, the fact that the pass rates for Becker are, you know, tend to be one of the highest. They have the most number of CPAs 
the, the most number of people who study for the CPA are through Becker, whether it be in the US or internationally. Um, and people do that because they know what they're getting. And what they're getting is, um, you know, very, very well thought out learning methodology. That learning methodology is there. And this is really important, you know, coming from, I'm a chartered accountant myself from the UK. Um, and I know we talked about evolution. Uh, Sharmaji, you talked about um, the evolution of the accounting world and, 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 and us accountants. And I think more and more what you're finding in the exams as well, that it's not about just being able to quote a standard. What you need to be able to do is understand and therefore be able to apply the understanding in very many different scenarios. And I think that's one of the areas where Becker excels in terms of the nature of our methodology, the nature of our products and our content. And of course, a lot of that comes to life through organized through the, through the fantastic faculty of Orbit who really understand that methodology and are able to bring it to life in terms of their live training and what have you. So there's the methodology, there's the confidence that a lot of organizations have to put their people through CPA. Um, and I think one other thing, you talked about pass rates. Um, you know, I'm not sure how of fame many people are around the CPA qualification, but every year there's a set of awards for people who consistently score above 95%. Now, we don't need to worry about scoring 95% here. I'm sure some of you will, and I hope you do, but it's about getting those three letters. That's what Orbit and Becker are gonna make sure that you do. You're gonna get those three letters, you're gonna pass that exam. But I'm giving you this example because actually for the last 15 years, 90% of the people who have received that award for the top marks have been Becker alumni. And I'm sure there might well be some from Orbit as well, uh, Mr. Sharma, you might remind us of this, but nonetheless, Oh yeah, uh, just, just to add, you know, there was a student who topped in Colorado, he was from Mumbai. And then we had a student who was third overall, uh, a lady who was from Chennai. There you go, exactly. I say, and that's it, you know, this is about, as I said, it's about passing the exam first and foremost, but for you as individuals, you want to be, you know, we're all gonna be future accountants, right? everyone here hopefully was, is either one or is going to be one. So the one thing you should always think about is risk management and return on investment, right? Two things that I would emphasize here when you're choosing your future career and how to get there. And this is about making sure that you choose an organization that has got pedigree, past record. And um, so that should give you the confidence that whatever money you're going to spend, you're going to get the return on it. And the return in this instance is passing that exam. And when you pass the exam, then you'll get your next return, which is going to be the increase in your, I guess, your salaries, your compensation, and also the speed at which your career can progress. Those are the two or three things, right? So manage the risk by taking the best solutions that are out there and make sure that you know you're confident about the return on investment that when you invest in a course to pass the cpa exam you're going to do one which has got a track record and then you'll find that even if you have to pay 10 15 20 percent extra the the fact that you're able to mitigate your risk making sure you pass is more than it has to be worth it otherwise what i've seen this before and this is really, really important. I have seen people take a cheaper course, something that's gonna, oh no, this is, this is like 60%, 70%, let me take this. All that will happen is you will end up having to pay double because you'll have to come to the best anyway, eventually. So go there straight away, get what you need. Um, so look, as I said, you know, I'm, I'm very, you know, it's, it's always an honor, it's pleasure for, um, Becker to work with. And this is another very important point. You know, Becker has such a strong reputation globally. So we choose our partners very carefully. Only those partners who can really demonstrate their understanding of um, the exam, the, the, the services they're able to provide. And I'm so glad, Sharmaji, you mentioned those various services that you provide because they're actually very, very critical 
for you to become a CPA in, 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 in your careers? Because unlike some other qualifications where the entry level is fairly straightforward, whilst the exam in CPA is very, very doable, and, you know, it's something which, you know, people get a little bit kind of, they take a step back and think, oh, I don't know if I'm manageable. I don't know if I can do this. I don't, you don't need to worry about that. Let the team at Orbit, the counselors who have been doing this for so long, they know and they will get you through to that part. All you need to do is listen to them, listen to their guidance, listen to their advice, and then make sure you, 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 you listen to your instructors and faculty when they tell you what to do. And if you do that, then you know half of your headache is gone. And therefore, that's what I'm saying. The CPA exam is extremely doable. Do not be put off by eligibility and evaluation concerns. All of those things, thousands of people are doing it. And the number of people who are doing CPA now in India has is just getting exponentially growth. Even, interestingly, even before the exam started in India last year, um, Still, for the three years preceding that, India was one of the fastest growing markets for CPA. Even though you had to go all the way to Dubai or even the US, still it was growing at about 20 plus, 25% plus, plus, because of some of the reasons that Sharmaji's mentioned. You know, you got high quality, the highest, the, the, the biggest firms in the world and their US operations have got huge centers here in India. And, and please, you know, sometimes when you use the word back office and BPO and these type of things, do not underestimate the work that is being done there. They are doing full, high quality, essential, critical assurance work, tax work, corporate finance work. So all of those key areas you'll be doing, don't think that you're just going to be, you know, just doing back office work. That is not the case. You're doing full assurance audit work and you're going to get that experience and you know they've been there for a number of years they've been and and the good thing about so many of those organizations is they invest heavily in their people i mean how lucky are you going to be if you know they're sponsoring you to study for the cpa exam and whatever else and even if they're not and you're able to do the cpa exam through likes of orbit you will get a great chance to progress your career. You will always be in high demand in those organizations. And they're always on the top list of the companies to work for. They train, they invest in you. And this is your kind of ticket to have a great career for those organizations, whether it be in India, whether it be in the Middle East, whether it be in the US or anywhere else, because those organizations know the value of the US CPA exam. Um, and like I said, you know, Becker have been lucky, fortunate um, that, you know, we have the trust of those organizations wherever we work. Um, and, you know, Orbit very much the same here in India in terms of, you know, how they have supported and serviced major organizations and people to get into those organizations like you all will. I'm sure of it. Um, that's I, I don't want to kind of take up too much of your time, uh, Shamaji. I know you've got your own agenda, but. I'm, I'm delighted to have been asked to, to come here um, and I can assure everyone here that, um, you know, they've, uh, they're very lucky to get these opportunities to learn more about professional exams like the CPA and um, you're with people who know. So um, let, them, let them show you the way. Azizia, if you could just uh, mention about the changes that are planned from just briefly or uh, from July on. Yeah, I mean, they're not, I, I mean, look, there's, there's four parts, right? Um, and what's happening is that, you know, th this is another really important thing about the CPA exam. Uh, it is always constantly looking to evolve because they need to make sure that you, who are going to become future CPAs are relevant, stay relevant, are fit for purpose, and you can provide the best services to your clients. So this is a good thing, right? It changes very, very regularly. There's actually going to be a much more significant change to the CPA exam in about three years time, which is going to really 
ensure that you know you know we're all living in this world especially in the last year using you know these tools like uh it technology tools has been critical anyway and anyone who's been doing any kind of any work but certainly accounting work if you're not comfortable with things like you know the latest technologies data analytics all of those things to be able to do your audit work or any accounting work then i'd be very surprised so some of that as i said major changes coming in about three years time which are going to really make sure that things like you know using um uh, tech, uh, or, uh technology and those different techniques to help with your audit uh, are going to be quite a critical part of it and also this is going to be very interesting is there's going to be a route to specialize um so that there's going to be a core part of the exam three there's still going to be four parts three parts you're going to have to do compulsory and then a fourth part whether you want to specialize in tax audit or whatever it is three or four things then you can specialize in those one of those areas it's optional so that's going to be a good thing going forward as well but to, to your point now about what's coming up in uh, this year it's relatively <clears throat> relatively minor but it could well impact how some of you approach the exam so there are four parts two of those parts i think audit and bc are going to have um more there's going to be more into that exam going forward from july so there might well be if you're still thinking about it you might want to try to get those exams done before july uh in the june window you know up to the good thing about india is now there are continuous testing windows so um if you've got an opportunity to get those done those ones that are going to have more content in it from july I would think about that carefully. I mean, look, please understand, right? This is not going to be, you know, a huge amount extra and you're going to have to learn a lot more, but nonetheless, there is going to be some additional content. And therefore, if you've already been started, you've already started your courses, I would definitely urge you to think about getting those exams done in June. And I think that, you know, I don't want to kind of dwell on it. I, I think actually what we'll do is, I've got a seminar that was um, was delivered by uh, Becca's head of curriculum, and I will forward that on to you, Shamaji, which you can share with the students here to give them some more depth. But it's not fundamental, but it could, it's definitely something to think about in terms of which parts to try to get done before um, uh, before that change uh, in Curtis in July. Uh, thank you so much, Aziz. Yeah. So, Shamili, do we have uh, Komal or Davinder on the line? Have they joined? Uh, not yet. Okay. Uh, you know, both Komal and Davinder, they are based in the East Coast. Uh, one is in Seattle and uh, one is in, uh, in Vancouver. And like it's 4.30 in the morning, they said they will, they will join. And, uh, you know, maybe maybe they... Yeah, I can, I can see Komal's just joined uh, from her iPhone. So uh, I'm going to, Komal, are you there? Yes, I'm here, sir. Okay, Komal, hi. Welcome, Komal. Thank, Thank you, you so much for getting up so early. Komal, I'd like yeah. you to uh, talk to all the students here and uh, explain about your journey uh, with, uh, with Becker and uh, where you are now. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you so much for this opportunity. And uh, yeah, actually, we, so me and my friend, you know, back in 2012, I believe, uh, we wanted to pursue CPA. Um, I had initially started my journey, like I had done CA earlier. Uh, I did not like complete my CA, although like I left after PCC, which was the second year. Um, but I still had this dream in my mind, you know, that I want to pursue I want to continue. I want to get my CPA done. At least I can complete CPA or something like that. I was like, okay, let's just go to Orbit Institute and check out um, what the course is like. And so we did some research. And of course, Sharmili ma'am was there and you were there and you provided some great guidance. Uh, and yeah, just got through our CPA, came to US. Um, and the plan initially, like at least for me, it was not to, you know, come here and settle here. Uh, but once I got here, once I cleared my CPA, you know, I got super motivated. Uh, and so I decided to like get a job here. And I think at that time I got a job. It was a part-time job. 
Uh, and after that, I was like, no, I want to make a switch. And so I reached out to you, Chris, sir. And I had asked you, like, you know, do you have any references? And at that time, you had a, you had a few references and you actually like guided me in the right direction. Um, I remember you sent me this uh, contact from Deloitte. It was, I believe, a partner or a principal at Deloitte. Uh, and so I reached out to him and he was super kind. Uh, and yeah that's how I got a job at Deloitte and that was like my you can say my first like full-time job in US yeah and then after that I never like went back I just stayed here um, yeah my journey with Deloitte was great uh, I, I was almost there for like four five and a half six years uh, and I recently shifted my job I'm at a different company now but but yeah, thanks to you. And uh, I had a great experience with Orbit Institute's, um, you know, doing the Becker CPA course and also like getting a job at Deloitte here. So I really appreciate that. Yeah, thank you, Komal. Thank you for getting up so early. Uh, just want to add, add to uh, Komal's uh, statement. You know, uh, we, we as a team of uh, Orbit instructors, we, we have been uh, doing training for the, all the fresh graduates who joined Deloitte. Uh, and training them in, you know, basic accounting, uh, accounting principles, and uh, also basic uh, taxation. So while we were doing this training, and this is not CPA training, you know, anybody who joins Deloitte gets a one week training, and they get accustomed to US taxation, they get accustomed to US accounting systems, revenue recreations. So a team of our instructors, Orbit instructors were hired to provide, you know, ongoing training for Deloitte. And uh, so right from 97, right up to 2015, five of our instructors used to go, to, and as I mentioned, we had 120 instructors. We used to go to Deloitte and train almost about 140 students just for basic accounting and all this stuff. And during those training, I, you know, I, of course, uh, we, we still do uh, CPA training for Deloitte. Uh, so during those training, I got... Uh, you know, uh, accustomed and known to a person by the name of Stephen, uh, who was who had been deputed from New York to handle the operations in India. So we had close contacts. And as I mentioned, you know, we have contacts with over 100 companies. So when Komal is a student from Pune, when she graduated, so I approached Stephen, who was based in New York. I said, we got some students who want to, uh, who want, you know, to try to get the job here. And he did uh, arrange an interview in Denver, right? That's where you went. So uh, Komal yes. ended up going in Denver and all this stuff. Yeah. So thanks, Komal. Thanks for coming out uh, early in the morning. And thank you. Yeah, so absolutely. Much. My pleasure. Thank you. All right. Um, Shimili, is Davinder there? No, not yet. Okay. Let me let me tell you. Let me share the story of Davinder with you. And uh, Davinder is also a student of mine from Hyderabad. Uh, a chartered accountant who had his own CA practice in Hyderabad did the CPA course with us uh, and later on started a back office for US taxation in, in Hyderabad. He was one of like, you know, we were five, six instructors from Orbit who used to go every six months and, and do, you know, the one week training in, uh, in, um, in Deloitte, you know, to their fresh employees and all. And by the way, we are also on the... Uh, when Deloitte goes on these field trips to recruit their students for, for joining Deloitte, they've taken the help of Orbit in uh, trying to, you know, talk to students about the CP examination and all this stuff. So coming back to Devinder, so when, uh, so he, he was in Hyderabad, the student with us and then, an, then an instructor with us and also like a consultant with Deloitte in this trading. So because he had the CPA qualification, Canada had a reciprocal exchange of qualifications. So if you've become a CPA from outside Canada, which he did, he, came, he became a CPA from Canada, from, from India. So he applied for the reciprocal exchange of qualifications and he ended up getting the Canadian CA qualification uh, just by writing a very condensed exam. So today, uh, Devinder is in Vancouver. Both, uh, both Shirmili, uh, both Komal and Davinder, you know, they are in the uh, Pacific time zone and it's like five o'clock in the morning there. So maybe, maybe that's why it's not he couldn't join. Uh, and you can always talk to him. So he's in Vancouver and he's working for a company that does cross-border taxation. So he does Canadian taxation as well as US taxation. 
and that is that is the winner and like like him you know there are so many people uh, in uh, in united states in canada who've taken advantage of the reciprocal exchange of qualifications and are working here there are people in singapore in dubai and numerous people in india just imagine that every year like deloitte sends almost 200 students uh, to take the cpa course and this is just one company and like as he said all the american top sp500 companies are in india and they they have back processes so they require people with the us cap knowledge so uh, next next thing i'd like to mention is that uh, you know the affordability of this course it's a little higher than competition but very very affordable like if you if you try to you know whenever we try to think of uh, pursuing higher education uh, affordability is not it is it is a matter to think about but it it should not be a stumbling block and you know i, I always tell my students when you compare the price of doing cpa with with the price of doing an mba from even a second rate uh, institute in india you are spending more doing your mba which really may open or may not open may be accepted in the market or may not be accepted so the average cost of doing the cpa examination and including going writing the examination the uh, enrolling for the examination the backer cpa review course is under 4 lakhs of rupees and uh, you spend 6 to 7 lakhs just just by doing mba examination i i clearly remember uh, the word of one of my instructors you know who said one statement in delhi she said that you should not look at the cost of the examination it is much much cheaper than doing an mba here you should look at the cost of not taking a review course this course is an exponential uh, has an exponential growth and an investment uh, payback to you once you do this course and the money that you spend it is a recovery period of 2 weeks 2 weeks of rec- 2 to week 2 to 3 weeks of pay off recovery period to recover your costs and opportunities uh, golden opportunities globally for you and your family so really uh, the cost is not a barrier at all and partnering with becker as i mentioned becker is becker is uh, as he's told you a lot about becker we have it is the best material i joined becker almost everybody joins becker majority of the people join becker all the toppers who get the awards are becker students so i'm going to take you through a through a material of becker uh, it, this is uh, we we've already conducted uh, you know as i mentioned you know we have right now because of covid so a lot of these lectures are online now and i've been conducting i've been uh, i've done all the three subjects already i've done financial auditing and regulation and uh, not this weekend but the next weekend we're going to start next saturday we're going to start we'll send out uh, we're going to start the business course so you can you can technically join the becker uh, cpa review course four times a year at the start of every course so i'm going to just take you through a small segment of the bec part 1 uh, just to get you familiar with the becker teaching methodology how we work and uh, how we teach as i mentioned to you we have 120 teachers and you you will be taught by people who would be they're the best people who work in the industry we got the vice president of air india who's a becker cp instructor we got people from uh, you know prize waterhouse from kpmg from uh, even uh, all the it companies also so many instructors we have so we we as a we as a before i get into the lecture i'll just tell you what orbit can do for you number one becker you're partnering with the best material in terms of preparing for the examination the leaders in the cpa preparation that is the becker material you got 120 instructors who will teach you train you i will also teach you and train you uh, and you are in touch with all of them we will we have 23 years of experience in determining your eligibility helping you enroll for the examination writing the examination that that we will help you we'll will will study the eligibilities and guide you along that we'll help you with licensing and as i mentioned we'll also help you with job opportunities 
and we'll also help you with practical training. We sometimes give free training in uh, practical text preparation to all of our students. So all this backup is there for you. You know, uh, I have lived, uh, I've studied in India, I've lived in Canada, I'm a Canadian citizen, I'm a US citizen, I've studied, done all the studies in India. So we have exposure of all the three countries and we can easily assist you. All the other people, all the other people in India who are doing that uh, are students of ours. And I can, I can, I'll just also take an opportunity of some of them. You must, if you've heard of a company called KNAV, KNAV uh, Consulting, this is a firm located in Atlanta with a back office in Pune, uh, back office in Mumbai. They have 500 people who are employees of KN, KNAV now. KNAV, the initials KNAV are all initials of four people who were who are students of uh, Becker in Mumbai. Kaza, uh, uh, Kishtash, Nishta, Nisha, and uh, all, this, all these people. So they have a consulting business, consulting all the Indian companies who have operations in US or US companies who are trying to go to India. They do their accounting, bookkeeping, and all this stuff. So, Tremendous opportunities back in India, elsewhere uh, with the CPA qualification. Now I'm going to take you to the Becker methodology. So we're going to start with uh, the B1 lecture. Okay. So this lecture is, you know, business paper. As I mentioned, there are four papers. We've done three of them. So the Becker material, this is, this is exactly the textbook of the Becker, which you'll get. So Becker will give you a hard copy, a hard copy of the material. And so in addition to the hard copy of the material, you'll also get a soft copy. So this is a soft copy lecture, which is also given to all the students. It is a part of the package. So you get hard copies of the material. You get soft copies of the material. This is the instructor version, which you know highlights what you should write, what you should underline and what should line. Along with this, we give you almost 6,000 multiple choice practice questions. And we give you almost like 40 to 80, I think 60 to 80 simulation questions. We give you mock examinations. We got flashcards. Flashcards are optional tools that you can buy. But the basic student gets hard copies of the material, soft copies of the material, online lectures delivered by the topmost instructors of Becker. So you have online lectures also delivered by instructors from Becker. And Flash then cards you have, are also uh, included in the software, Mr. Shah. And that's also included in the, the online lectures also included in the software. You have all the multiple choice questions, you have all the simulation questions. And then we, we in India hold classes. Uh, they could be retail classes, they could be online classes, and we have 120 teachers here. So this is an example of how we will teach. So, so say I'm teaching you the BC course, which I'm going to do, I'm going to teach you for the next five, 10 minutes and tell you and compare you. So, you know, whenever we talk of, uh, you know, any frameworks, like just like, you know, for accounting principles and policies, you know, we have generally accepted accounting principles and for, it is mandatory for companies that do an audit in the US to also have a review of the internal control done. So a licensed CPA is required to issue an attestation report on the effectiveness of internal control in, in addition to saying that the financial statements are fair and are in compliance with generally accepted accounting principles. So this particular chapter deals with the internal control framework. Like, you know, every company can develop their own internal controls. You know, you can have internal controls, you can have questionnaires, you can have flow charts, and everybody can have their own processes and lay out a diagrammatic representation of what the project is. So, but there is a body called COSO. So it is called the Committee of Sponsoring Organizations. It is an independent private initiative body, which was established in 1980. And to study how to, to give a platform, to give a framework to all these organizations who could not develop their own, uh, 
own internal control systems to follow this framework. And this has been accepted. And so this is the framework that a lot of companies do. It is the best practices of how to, uh, how to you know, basically make sure that when I'm reviewing internal control, I'm actually determining how effective the internal control is. So COSO is a framework and this framework deals with, you know, basically an attestation report along certain guidelines, which are regulated by the, by the COSO framework. And it has, it has 17 objectives. So the application of the, so the board of, so the responsibility of financial statements and the report, responsibility of internal control is always that of the management. The management is required to, uh, set up a framework to capture all the information accurately, efficiently, and on a timely basis. So the management is responsible for effectively applying internal control, judgments, identifying the weaknesses, eliminating the weaknesses, and even you know the application of that. Because ultimately the financial statements are gonna be looked at, by, uh, looked at uh, by an investor or a shareholder who wants to make, you know, who wants to make a decision whether he should really invest in a company or not. So he wants to be sure that the numbers reflected in the balance sheet or in the income statement or in the statement of cash flows are very accurate. And one of the, so he gets a, he like, he gets a lot of uh, credibility and faith in the financial statements if there's a framework on internal control, the cost of framework has been applied. And what does that framework? It tells you that this is what you should do to determine if the uh, internal control framework is very effective. So the it is it is uh, understanding given to the shareholders. It provides them confidence, understanding, and whether to really analyze and invest in this company. So the COSO cube, it is, it is called a cubicle thing. It has the objectives. So there are three objectives of compliance, reporting and communication. So how do you communicate the framework? How do you report the framework? Is everybody meeting the uh, things here? And what are the various uh, organizational structures? Now, whenever we talk of uh, internal control framework, you know, the, it starts off at the organizational macro level. You've got the entire you, you know, you got, an, you got an organization, but suppose I'm an IT company. So I have an environment in which I work, which is external to me, external to the company. So we will look at what are the external factors which affect your communication and reporting. And then we will look at the internal factors. Now, even, at the, even when we go to the internal control framework at the internal factor, we start from the organization level, the top level, and we go to the operating level. So we go to the management level, we go to the operating level, we go to the factory level and the employees level. So on one side, we got all the levels, which, which uh, you know, the levels which will be effective at the floor of a, of a manufacturing facility, the internal framework will be different from the man, uh, levels affected at the management level. So bearing all these three objectives in mind, we, uh, we have internal control framework at each level. And then what is, the, what is that framework? It deals with the control environment. What is the control environment? And again, when we talk of control, these are macro. Macro means even in the industry, even in the environment and internal also. And then we take a look at the risk. Uh, what is the risk? And what is the control activities, the existing controls, the information technology and the monitoring activities. So very, very quickly, I mean, I'm just going to uh, mention, so the control environment is environment, uh, which Mr. is Shama, external. Can I interrupt for a minute? Yeah, can yeah, you please. share your screen, please, so that the students get to know. Oh, hold on one second. Hold on one How do I share my screen? One second, I'll ask Ram to share a screen. Yeah, can Ram share if you can share it, please? Hmm. 
now I cannot share the screen. Okay. All right, so Ram, can you stroll a little down then since you're regulating? Okay, just, just go down a little more, Ram. More, more, more. Go to the framework, yeah. Okay, so we, we, got, we got this framework. I'm just gonna discuss about this cube here. So the control environment is the external environment as well as the environment on the top. So the management makes a risk assessment. What is the risk to this company in terms of you know, reporting correctly? So is this company changing employees every day? Does it have new technologies? Uh, things like that. So the risk assessment deals with all the risks faced by that particular company. The control activities means what are the existing controls? You know, we have passwords, we have securities of assets of the company. Uh, we have login IDs and all this stuff. Those are all control activities which a company operates. Information and communication, how do you communicate the results of reporting? Uh, how do you identify any variances? Like, you know, we have standard costing versus actual costing, if there's a various thing. And then, you know, how do you monitor these activities? So, so Becker will tell you exactly how to, what is important, how to underline everything. And then, and, and basically, and the local instructor, the teacher, uh, you know, whoever's teaching you, whether it's uh, online or live lectures, will explain you the Becker lecture. You already have the same online lecture uh, delivered by an instructor from Becker, which you can listen at home and come, come to the class. And then an Indian instructor will cover that same lecture in his own way, give you comparisons to the Indian situation and all that stuff. Now, after each lecture, we have, you know, we, the Becker has pass keys. All these things that are underlined are very, very important from an examination. It has pass keys which tell you what is important. And after each segment, we test you on a lot of multiple chess questions. So Ram, you just want to put up a multiple chess question for a minute? You want me to share my screen? I can share the screen, okay. Yeah, you can. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Okay, so after, after we teach, you know, the Becker uh, course is divided into modules, like business one, uh, maybe has about six or seven modules. So after each module, to make sure that, you know, the student understands the lecture, we will put up this multiple choice questions. So the, like, this is a question, the external orders of the company, and then we'll have this question, and we'll have the four, uh, four answers, and then you will review the question, you will pick up the right answer, the instructor will discuss the answer. Now, in your online lectures that you have, uh, we have a tab which is basically an explanation tab. Now, when you press an explanation tab, the live instructor from Becker comes live and actually solves the problem for you. So we have written solutions to the problem. We have a teacher explaining you the solutions to the problem. You have a local instructor uh, within India who will actually discuss this problem for you and all this stuff. So this is how the Becker methodology works. And if you follow the Becker methodology, your chances of passing are very, very high. Uh, as a student, you just need to be very disciplined and in a very short time of anywhere from six months to maybe 14 months, you can qualify as a CPA and open doors to yourself, uh, you know, locally and internationally also. So uh, thank you so much for, uh, for uh, you know, this lecture. Now what we will do is uh, we will uh, take any questions between Aziz, me and anybody else. If you have uh, any questions, you can ask any one of us. Okay, so any questions? Yeah, Mr. Malesu, you have a question I can see in your chat box. Yeah. So do you want to ask a question, Mr. Malesu? 
Hello, sir. Good evening. Yeah, yeah. You want to ask a question? Yes, yes. So, uh, thank you so much, uh, Sarmaji and Ajay, and they have taken a very good uh, insight, and uh, most of the things are clear for our students. Uh, but since I have been uh, interacting with these students for the last two years, and many of these students uh, have some Hello. attention. Hello. How much? Uh, okay, Abhi, I'll get you on board. Mr. Sharma, Devendra has joined. Okay, uh, I think we'll, before we take questions, we'll have Devendra who's just joined us. He's going to he's going to come on the screen. Uh, and, uh, you know, he'll tell you his experience with the uh, Becker CPA. Devinda, thank you so much for joining. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for having me, uh, Sharmaji. So, uh, so I wanted to share my experience um, uh, uh, studying through Becker CPA review. I did it in uh, back in 2008. So uh, uh, before joining Becker CPA, I uh, kind of... Um, uh, looked upon like a couple of other uh, CPA reviews available uh, in the market, and I was uh, uh, the, the 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 best thing with Becker is that it's totally exam oriented. So uh, uh, you know it, uh, you will see like seventy to eighty percent of the questions straight from the past masters, and uh, you know it's uh, if you uh, practice Becker CPA questions two or three times, then it's very easy to crack the exam. And uh, just to tell you that I passed my CP exam at first sitting and my average score was 91%. And uh, uh, everyone at the Orbit Institute, um, Sharma Ji, Sharmili, and I was in Hyderabad. So George and you know uh, the local, uh, the coordinators were very, very helpful. And uh, I can tell you that uh, you know, uh, uh, joining Becker through Sharmaji through Orbit was best thing which I did, and uh, not only passing exam. Uh, you know, after passing the exam, I I, uh, I was lucky enough and fortunate enough that I could work with Sharmaji on a couple of other uh, assignments, training assignments. Uh, they uh, helped me take up uh, training um, uh, assignments in with Deloitte uh, India. And he also, uh, Sharmaji personally is very helpful. He also helped me set up my own US tax practice. And, uh, and, and also, uh, you know, further to add that uh, because of US CPA, I got, uh, I could pass uh, a Canadian CPA exam uh, because US CPA and Canadian CPA have uh, reciprocal uh, arrangement contracts so that, you know, you, you don't uh, otherwise Canadian CP exam, it takes minimum three to four, three, three years of time to pass. But uh, due to the reciprocal arrangement, I could pass Canadian CP exam also in less than six months time. And now I'm settled in uh, Vancouver, BC, Canada. And I, I do uh, US tax uh, practice here. Uh, so that's about uh, you know, my experience with Baker CPA. I can only say that, you know, uh, Baker CPA and also uh, uh, Orbit Institute. So I'm, I'm with Orbit Institute, uh, you know, right from whatever, like 2008, and they have been very helpful, uh, you know. So I, I will definitely recommend every student to take up uh, C Baker CPA through uh, Orbit Institute. So you can ask me in case you have any questions. Uh, also, okay. I'll be happy yeah. to answer. Yeah. Thank you so much, Devinda, for joining so early in the morning. Yeah. So uh, right now we'll open up, uh, uh, you know, any questions that you have for Aziz, me or Devinda, anybody, any one of us. So please feel free. Uh, you can ask any questions here. Yeah. Okay, I'd, I'd like to mention, you can, you know, uh, uh, whenever you have questions, you can ask. I'd like to mention that we will be starting the business course, not tomorrow, next Saturday at, uh, you know, at, uh, we'll, we'll send a mail out. So the whole process of registering for the Becker CPA review course is to give a call to the Pune head office and say that you want to enroll. And Shirmili will uh, tell you everything about, about you know, how to, how to go about it and how to you know start the eligibility process and all the stuff 
Yeah. Now, I one thing I've been telling in every seminar, and it is and is crossing my mind again now, that uh, we we should have uh, we should not try to delay decision making. You know, sometimes what we what we do, we have a we have a tendency. All of us have a tendency. Oh, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. That you know, I'll do if my friend does it, and all that stuff. Now, I always tell my students that you know, if you want to do it, you know, take the decision. And after you know, we've been we've been in the market for uh, like for the last twenty three years now, and it's a it's like a quarter of one's life. We've been running the CPA course in India and it has grown exponentially. Uh, today, there are so many more players and all the other players are also my students. So many people have gone to US and so many people are in other parts of the world, all by virtue of this qualification. Today, uh, we could have brought, uh, today you met Devinder, you met Komal, two examples of students who did CPA with us and now they're in the US. So take a decision. If you don't want to do it, that's fine. I mean, at least, you know, you don't try to uh, put your foot in two, two boats. So, but once you do decide, I can tell you this is one course which will give you exponential return on your investment. It will, it will open up doors for you throughout the world. And even the affordability, it is much cheaper than an Indian CA. So do not hesitate in taking a decision and I can assure you from 23 years of testimonials and history that it will benefit you and you will be very, very happy that you know you chose, uh, you chose to become a CPA. So now if you have any questions for any one of us, please. Uh, uh, okay, I have a question here from Deepika. Uh, it says, I'm going to give my CA into exam in May and planning to pursue, so is it worth, worth to drop the CA examination? Maybe Devinder, you can answer that question. So she said, uh, should we yeah. drop her CA or, and then I'll add to it, yeah. No, uh, so what I suggest is Deepika personally that uh, do not uh, plan to drop your CA. Uh, I suggest that continue uh, pursuing whatever professional course you are doing and, uh, uh, and, and then simultaneously uh, plan for CPA. So you, you have your exam in May 2021, so maybe you can plan for, uh, you know, the next, uh, the, the, the spring, uh, sorry, yeah, the uh, 2021. I think the, uh, you can check the schedule of CP classes with Sharmaji or Sharmili, uh, you could plan to join the next one. That's what my suggestion is. Sharmaji, over to you. Yeah, Aziz, uh, would you like to add to that, please? Uh, yeah, sure, look, I, I think on the CA side, um, you know, uh, you, you started it, right? So unless there's a very good reason why you don't want to finish it off, then I think you should continue to pursue it. You know, it still has value. And, you know, I think there is also a lot of kind of cross coverage in terms of, uh, con you know, curriculum and things like that. So they, they can benefit each other as well. I think as, as the Rindra said, I think you need to just kind of, Make sure you're managing your study timetable in a sensible way that you're not overburdened. Um, but I wouldn't, I also wouldn't recommend um, in any way um, to, to stop pursuing that um, right now. And, and I think, again, this is where, you know, the counseling team at uh, Orbit can help you in terms of, you know, planning your study patterns, both for CA and CPA, to make sure that, you know, you're successful in both of them. Yeah, just, just to add what Aziz has said, that you know, the biggest asset you have in your hand is your time. So, you know, sometimes it, it, is, it is a real situation and, uh, and you know, some people struggle and take about 10 years to clear their CA examination. And that's a lot of time wasted. So we always recommend to the students that approach the qualification simultaneously. If you, if you think it's, you're taking too long on the CA examination, don't drop it, get your CP out of the way and uh, effective time management. So we have another question from Mani. Uh, uh, and that question is, I have a question. I'm from Toronto. Can I appear for classes virtually uh, from Orbit? And can I also write the CP exam from Toronto? Uh, is, this, is the CP examination offered in Toronto, in Canada? Yes, I think it is now. They have, 
It's only for a period of time because of COVID. So they have, um, there are exams being sat in Canada until the end of June. So at the moment, the committed time period is until end of June uh, to be able to sit the exam in Canada, then they will relook at it. So and after that point, there's no commitment from the from NASBA, but to date until the 30th of June, then um, you can sit exams in Canada, uh, US CP exams. And people from Canada can easily cross the border and you know go and write the exam in Detroit or Windsor or all the border towns. Now uh, you can you can attend virtual classes of Orbit. Yes, that is another question. Uh, uh, like she's a student based in uh, he's a student based in uh, in Toronto. So can he join the Orbit classes? Is this? So that's a question to me. The student is based in Toronto and they're uh -huh. asking if they can join the virtual classes of Orbit. Well, to me, you see, it's very important. I think, um, I don't know who asked the question, Mani. Huh? I think, look, Mani, I think what happens is you see Becca has, you know, arrangements in different countries around the world. And therefore, uh, you know, it's probably best to approach Becca's partner, specific partner for uh, Canada, um, in terms of that, from the first instance. Uh, there's another question from uh, so, so basically, uh, Mani, you have to approach the Becca representative in Canada, and uh, and they will they will offer the same thing to you. So there's a question from Shreya. The chain that you spoke of about earlier is restricted to the US CPA only. And does it cover any other regions as well? Yeah, this is about the change in the examination effective. Is, is that what, what uh, Shreya you're implying? The change of the examination will be effective from July 1st. Basically, what they're saying is that they want to uh, have a more uh, ground reality testing of the examination and the application. So, so just to tell you very quickly, like in the BEC paper, we have a lot of uh, attestation engagements, you know, which all a lot of CPAs are doing. They are attesting that the internal control is working properly. We have a SOC 1 report, SOC 2 report and all that stuff. So because it is a very practical thing happening in the world, so there'll be more focus on, on, on those environments. And this is very, very specific to the US CP examination, yeah. So, uh, like, like Aziz also advised that because the major changes, I, I wouldn't say major, but substantial changes are taking place in the BEC paper and the uh, audit paper. So, people who are already enrolled should try to aim to write those two papers uh, before uh, July. Yeah. Any more questions? There was a question actually, uh, Sharmaji, which I think your insight would be helpful for, right? So I don't know if we answered this question. Someone's written, can a student with non-accounting background get through CPA? Oh, okay. What do you think? But you have to be eligible, right? You have to be That's eligible. Exactly. You have to be eligible. You know, every, like I was going to mention to you, the CP examination is conducted by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, but administered at the state level. So every state will set certain standards of who can actually write the CP examination. And that is called eligibility. So as I mentioned, you, you need 120 semester hours in accounting. Uh, 100, total 120 semester hours, you know, with some credits in accounting, some in auditing, and they vary from state to state. Now, if you meet those requirements, you, you, can, uh, you can write them. Uh, we have had, I'm, I'm telling you, we've had students who had a BA background and then later on took some accounting courses and they, they did write and they did pass. The CP examination, the backup material is very well laid up and uh, very systematic, the amount of practice that they give you through multiple choice questions to simulations, it would not be difficult to pass the examination, but eligibility is a requirement to qualify to write the exam, yeah. Yeah, perfect, perfect response, yeah. Yeah. So uh, uh, Ram has written that you need to have around five to six accounting related courses to qualify. What struggles do they face? Uh, 
I was remind. I mean, I, I must say that you know, if you, uh, what is the prerequisite of clearing the CP examination? Of course, you know your background, your knowledge does matter. But if you are very disciplined and you are very conscientious and you have a very determined approach, I think it is very doable. Okay, so, uh, oh yeah, uh, another question that came up was, can I manage my CP examination while I'm studying, uh, while I'm doing my CA article ship? Majority of the people, almost I would say 99% of the people who do the CP examination are, are uh, working. And now there are a lot of students who right after BCom and MCom who are joining. But initially when we started, we had all the people who were employees and people who were working in accounting firms like Pricewaterhouse, KPMG, you know, working like right from nine o'clock till seven, 7.30 in the morning. It is very, very doable. The number of hours that you are required uh, to actually put into this uh, course, you know, we have um, like 10 modules of uh, financial and then we have auditing and then <laughs> 8, 8, 16, 26, about 30 modules. So 30 modules times about four, four hours. Per. So we've got 120, uh, you know, instruction hours uh, where we actually teach you the course and all this stuff. Now, two and a half times that. So another maybe 300 hours of preparation at home. So in a total, in, in a total uh, input of about 400 to 500 hours, you can write this examination and you have the flexibility you have the flexibility of writing the examination as and when you like. Like, you know, we, we had to write it uh, like the wind, we had to write it in May or uh, November. You can write one examination in January, uh, study for one, one course, write that examination, then study for the next course, whatever methodology suits you best. And uh, with the Becker disciplined approach, you come to the class, before you come to the class, you do a revision of what you're going to study in the class. You come to the class, the teacher will teach you, go, you go back home, you practice the multiple choice questions, practice the simulation questions. And then, you know, you revise it two times more. You are very, very well prepared for the exam. Yeah. Yeah, we have many students who are, who are CA inter, who have an MBA finance background, a lot of BCOMs, a lot of chartered accountants. And, you know, somebody with a BA and an MBA finance also qualifies, yeah. There was another question that if there's going to be a change in the examination from July, July 21st, uh, June, uh, July 2021, should we write the exam in December? I mean, you know, if you're joining fresh, uh, if you're joining fresh uh, and you know this is the first course you're joining, then you should not write before July. Uh, I was uh, I was talking about the students who joined about five six months ago who already studied for the financial paper, the auditing paper, and also uh, the regulation paper. Since they've already studied without the changes that are going to take place, so and there are not so many changes in regulation. So for them, it is advisable that. They write the business paper and the uh, and the auditing paper uh, before July, but if if you don't do it, one thing that has happened is and 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 uh, Aziz will also certify that the course content has slightly decreased. Also, there are certain parts of the examination uh, that have been taken out and certain parts that are already in the in the BEC paper have been more emphasized like internal control. So it's not going to be, it's not going to be that you're studying with a lot of extra material. It's just that the focus is changing from more uh, practical, uh, focus is changing to more practical topics like internal control attestations and assignments like those. So I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I was, uh, I was just, uh, uh, you know, specific to people who had already taken the three courses with us, study for the three courses. If you can uh, try to write the BEC paper and the auditing paper before July. If you can't, it's not the end of the world. It's, uh, it's we'll, we'll send you all the changes in terms of material, in terms of what needs to be emphasized more and you will be upset. The Becker has, has updates which they give you constantly. 
all the online lectures that you have are constantly updated. So you are always with the updated material, updated specific to the examination pattern. Yeah. I think that's any, any more questions? Agishri had one. She's saying which are the top three states for pursuing CPA? Which are the top what? three states for pursuing CPA. Okay, yeah, what state you select? Uh, Aziz, you wanna handle that? Uh, yeah, I can. I think, look, as this really, a lot of this depends on your own kind of education background. And as uh, Shamanji mentioned, to answer one of the other questions around someone who's coming from a non um, BCom background, non accounting background, I should say, you know, you need to be able to have to demonstrate certain accounting knowledge and business knowledge. So some of your credit credit hours, so to speak, have to come within certain subjects, right? And um, different boards, different state boards have different requirements. So to give a top three, it really depends. There's a top three depending on your own background. You know, I'm not going to kind of you know, I don't want to give too many names away, right? You know, for example, I, I, I believe a lot of people who are coming from a kind of CA, BCom, BCom plus CA or BCom plus uh, ICWA, for example, I think they tend to go for something like California and Alaska who have got, you know, who allow a lot of the experience requirements and those type of things. And, and again, you know, the, the things to think about during, for a state, right, is one, when you can sit the exam so your eligibility to sit the exam secondly you have to you should be looking at you know um how much uh, so, so which which state allows you to sit depending on credit hours to sit the exam right some 150 some 120 then you need to think about how what proportion of those need to be accounting and business and also you need to look about the um, ultimately the license requirements, which comes a bit later. Don't let that be your focus. Fo focus should be about when you can sit the exam. And then once you do that, and then, then, then your account, your background, <coughs> like I said, if you're, if you think about the different categories you might be, right? You might be just a BCom. You might be a MCom or an MBA. You might be a BCom plus CA or BCom plus ICWA, or you might be BCom plus Inter or a part MCom. So it's difficult to point out the top three. What I've seen is, um, you know, Alaska is very popular for certain groups, including, you know, those who've got an MCom, BCom, or part, part um, CAs. And then, um, California is another board, depending on whether if you're a qualified accountant, the qualified CA, and there are a number of other ones if you're just coming from a pure BCom background. But again, I wouldn't, you know, I, I, as I said before, that to help you navigate through that, just have a talk to your counselors, let them know your background, and then they can advise you. You know, we, we will help you select the states <clears throat> and, you know, based on your educational background, you know, we will tell you this is the state that is probably the easiest for you to go to. And remember that, you know, registering in Alaska does not mean you have to go to Alaska to write the examination. <laughs> you can write it anywhere. I, I'll, I'll be an Alaska student, but I can write the examination in Detroit or wherever. So we will, we will help you with that. I mean, uh, so we look at your education and we say this is the state from which you'll qualify. And then, you know, you can also transfer after passing, you can transfer it wherever you want to settle down. Uh, there was another question here. Uh, um, can I can I write my CP examination after 18, 15 years of gap? I had a student, uh, I had a father and a daughter join the course in Mumbai. So the daughter was 24, the father was 60. The average age of a student, uh, when we started this course, right from... Uh, in 1997 to almost like 2013 was 34 years. So we had people who were 50 years. We had people who were uh, 25 years. So really there is no, uh, 
In fact, Shamili, you remember we had a, we had a student who used to live in the same building in Pune. Yeah, he was sixty-four. He was sixty-four, and so we asked him. I says, uh, uh, he says, my my kids are settled in U.S. and I'm going to migrate there. So maybe during uh, during the tax season, I'll work for H and R Block and make some money. So he did it. So uh, so a lot of people. So basically, there is no age uh, restriction at all. So you can write it uh, at whatever age, and 15 years is not. <clears throat> I wrote my CP examination when I was 39 or 40, and uh, so and that that is uh, it's very normal. Uh, people retire in the US at 65, and uh, so you have a lot of productive years ahead of you. Yeah, Chris, I just want to come in on there because I think. The other point, just to mention, is and I, and I and I hope I'm interpreting this question correctly, is I think they're also saying they maybe have sat some CPA exams in that past, so I think that is important to mention that you will have to restart. You cannot, you know, let's say you you sat one exam twelve years ago for one part or two parts, you will have to restart all the parts again, because then you have an eighteen month window to clear those. Um, Clear the actual exams. And uh, coming to that, also, I just want to mention that Becker has two packages of material. Uh, you get the textbooks, you get the online uh, version of the textbook, you get the online lectures, you get the question banks, and you get you get the mock examinations. Now, these have a duration of two years, or you can have unlimited unlimited renewal. renewal. Unlimited renewal, and uh, so you know, uh, two years. If you if you th you know if you're very confident, you can do uh, a past examination in two years. You can go for that package, or for whatever reasons, if you know you you're unable to write the examination and to keep your access active and live, you can also go for the unlimited package. All that stuff. Uh, I'm a chartered accountant and a BCom, so California may be better. Most, most uh, from from uh, our experience, most chartered accountants do go to California. Is it possible to excel the CP examination within eight months? Very possible. In fact, you can do it in. Uh, Devinder, you took five, four, five months. Six months. Six months. Devinder cleared it in six months. You people have done it. You know, we had we had a topper from Colorado who. Top the Colorado State. Uh, he was a Becker student uh, from India. We had one girl who stood third in the examinations. He was a Chennai student, and uh, and most of these people have taken on an average anywhere from six months to twelve months. Is it difficult for a BBA student to take the CP examination? No, it's not difficult, but you'll need, you'll need some accounting uh, courses that you might have to take. It's not difficult at all. I, can, I you know I I want to emphasize again CP examination is not a very difficult examination with the Becker tools that you have and the methodology that you have uh, and if you are very disciplined and determined it's not difficult at all. So uh, I'd like to thank you, uh, thank all of you for uh, and thank you so much Aziz for joining us. Thank you, Devinder. Oh, thank you. And uh, you have uh, our email address. You have Shermili's contact. You have the Orbit head office address. So <clears throat> go home and take a decision, whatever decision is is. And I can always assure you that to study and get a CPA qualification, which is highly endorsed all over the world, will be a very good decision. But I'll leave that decision making on you. And if you do decide, our next course starts not this weekend, but the next Saturday. And you can uh, join with the business class. So thank you so much. Thanks, Aziz. Thanks. Thank again. you. Good luck, Thanks, everyone. Aziz. Thank Good luck, everyone. Thanks, Aziz. Yeah. Bye, bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, bye. guys. Take care.